Hey everybody, welcome to another Heroes of the Storm Alpha broadcast. The Alpha is still live and there's a lot of information coming in each and every day. People are playing Heroes of the Storm all day long and there is even a new balance patch for the game. So Blizzard is really making a lot of effort to just keep the game in its present state, always developing, always improving it a little bit and working on those issues that the community reports. It's absolutely amazing, it's so much fun to play and it's really stunning. So I hope that you get the chance to get your fingers on the game itself very soon. But for now, we're looking at one of those things that actually doesn't really work in the Alpha just yet. We don't have an opportunity to cast replays to really broadcast those matches, but Blizzard is there to help us out. They released a new video. This time it's a Haunted Minds game that the community casters can once again bring to you and uh, show you a little bit how the game works and of course improve that with colorful commentary. So we are going to jump into the game right away. Haunted Minds, another Alpha broadcast by Calder TV. As already mentioned, the map today is the Haunted Mines, and it's one of the greatest maps that we currently have in the cycle, in my personal opinion. A very diverse map since after some time those mines open up and you go down there to collect skulls and raise a golem. But it also has a couple of weaknesses. We're going to talk about this a little bit later. Let's focus at first on the hero lineup that we have here. As you can see on the blue team all the way to the left, you have Vala with that witch set. It's actually pretty amazing. We have a witch dog down there as well. Carrigan all the way at the front for the positioning. There's an easy AI in the game with a good old Tassadar and we have Stitches with one of those great skins that we see there. We're going to talk about the combination a little bit later. Tyranda here, ETC, Reyna, the Tinker and also of course good old Uther on the other hand on the red team. And I like this composition actually quite a lot. The Tinker in particular is a hero that is great for pushing abilities. If you play him as a jungling type, you can do so much to support your team. He's one of the few characters in the game that is really able to the entire time just go for creep cams and make sure that those mercenaries Areas fight for you. Four, Problem with this map three, is a little bit there are not two, too many around of one. those that are close by. In total, Let it's only three battle. if you count the Night Mercenary Camp in the middle of the map. So he shines a bit on uh, bigger maps, in my opinion. But on this map, he's still a good asset to the team, but he's not as strong as on others. And focusing now a little bit on the team that we have to the left side of the blue team. Uh, Tessita being an easy AI is a little bit of an issue here, unless that's just the name of one of the developers, because the shield and Tessita as a support hero is so vital for the game. But uh, first, we have most of the heroes already all the way at the top. Tarana going in there at the same time with Slam of Stitches. ETC looking for an opportunity in the Tinker, always of course with his turrets here. And there comes Kerrigan going for the Primal Grasp, but immediately ETC there as well, repelling her. Tarana moving in for the red team. Nice arrow here on Stitches, but that that guy is way too tanky. The power slide stunning him for a second, but it's not enough. ETC out position. He gets caught in and gets taken out by Vela. Oh my god, that completely backfired for the red team here. And they're about to lose another one if they're unlucky. Yes, Saranda with a primal grasp caught by Kerrigan and dies in the end. Amazing start for the blue team. Really well done. Biding that time, waiting for the blue team, sorry, for the red team to make a mistake. And that mistake happens. And then they take two in a row. Really well played here by Blue. And you could really see how much damage Vala was doing. Great took by Stitches once again on ETC. He's dodging with the power slide, the slam not reaching him and gets away to safety. But what an opening in this game. Vala, just such a great hero. She's super, super squishy, but she is so strong, especially when supported by Uther, by Tasta, one of those few that we have there that can really make sure that you have the survivability that you need. Down in the mines, we don't see anything just yet. They are not open. And here, once again, a nice hook by Stitches. The slam hits home. And Vala, of course, dishing out the damage as well, but Uther is already there to save the day with a quick stun trying to get away. And he might be in a little bit of trouble. Here comes the time war by Tasta. And Stitch is moving in once more. ETC trying to divert for now. Another great stun by Tyranda. Getting the arrow in on Stitches. And Stitches has to immediately get the hell out of dodge there. He's way too low on HP. One of the great things about Stitches is that if you compare him to other heroes like in uh, League of Legends or Dota 2, let's say for example Pudge in Dota 2, you can actually, in Heroes of the Storm, hook through your own creeps. That's a huge advantage if you want to get those hooks in. This time he's not able to get ETC, but Vala with a... Oh my god, with a tumbler forward, gets into range, takes him down. Carrigan a little bit too late with the Impaling Blades, but Vala there to get another kill for the blue team. And they are already on level, nearly level 5 at this point, whereas Red is struggling a little bit. But then later on, we will of course also see the strength of the Tinker. If he starts pushing right now, he's still outside, behind the gate. All the way at the bottom, we have of course Xperian Gathering there as well. The zombie wall not really affecting Reyna in this situation. 
He needs to be a little bit more precise with those. Keep in mind that in Heroes of the Storm, it's all about the global EXP. There are no items, there's no gold, there's no last hitting. EXP is the only currency in the game, and that's why it's so important to always have a hero on each and every lane so that you get that EXP for your entire team. The mines open, so now it's time to collect those skulls. And at the same time, a primal grasp again. Oh my god, Reyna completely caught off guard by this. He didn't see this one coming. And Witch Doctor and Kerrigan take him out. Now suddenly ETC seems to be willing to fight. I have no idea why on God's Earth he thinks he can win this one. He has to retreat in the end. But we already have the fight continuing down in the mines, where especially the blue team is trying to go for those skulls. And one of the things that's really funny about the Haunted Mines, well, hold those sources because we have another battle coming up as Uther joins in with Paranda. No arrow just yet. The Tinker moving in with a couple of turrets, but immediately the blue team moving out of distance. There comes the arrow. Nice shield on Stitches. And once again, the relocating here of Uther tries to go for it. Uther heals himself. And at the same time, we have Tyrande moving in as well. Keep in mind that she has a healing skill that can also speed up a hero that has several other things that you can really give a hero. It's just such a great support. Tyranda, one of my personal favorites in terms of supporting. She is great and has such a high skill ceiling. It's so much fun to play her. But here we have another kill as Tacita gets taken out by the red team. This time a little bit too slow on that shield. And oh my god, Stitches. He won't be able to escape from this one, will he? He's trying though, but no, it's way too much. It's four on one. They're ganking up on him there and he just can't do anything about it. Talking about what I was trying to say a little bit earlier. The one of the big problems um, that you have here, by the way, Reyna also has a big problem, it's called the Witch Doctor. But yeah, one of the big problems of this map currently is that the skulls don't matter as much as you would think. It's a huge effort to go through the mines, collect all those skulls and get that big golem. But you don't have to necessarily go down the mines. You can stay up on top and just push. And usually you really make up for what happens if you five-man the big golem of your opposing team later on. So I, in my personal opinion, this is one of the maps where Blizzard will still tweak a little bit just to make sure that the mines are a little bit more effective because right now, for most teams, it's the better strategy to actually ignore the skulls for quite some time and just continue pushing all the way at the top. Blue, by the way, still in the favor here and they are actually in a situation where they will have the bigger golem. It's going to be an 80-90% golem for them and they are already very close to level 9. That's one of the biggest issues in Heroes of the Storm right now. That once you hit level 10, your entire team will have access to its heroic ability, to the ultimate. And that's of course where you get a massive advantage over your opponent's team. Especially if you were able to keep them low, if you were able to keep them on level 8, let's say, maybe even level 7. That advantage to have the uh, heroic ability for so much longer is just absolutely insane for team fights. Team which is why most teams currently camp. at level 10, when they reach it first, try to push immediately. We have a few siege golems here for the blue team, so they are really preparing for this push. Not all of the skulls have been uh, collected just yet. One hero down in the mines right now, trying to take care of it. At the same time, Reyna being caught off guard a little bit. The zombie wall doesn't hit him though, but we have Stitches moving in. Stitches getting a low on HP. Reyna with a penetrating round, and Stitches about to die, but ETC not turning around yet. Can he go in for another power slide? Doesn't seem like it. We have level 10 up on the blue team, and immediately being used by, of course, the Witch Doctor trying to make that work. ETC moving in as well. He's trying to go for the face melt here and he goes down in the end the witch doctor just a tiny little bit too strong but at the same time Kerrigan has to be careful Reyna is moving in once more might have another penetrating round here comes another one and bam he goes down but at oh wow we have so much shit dying here Reyna calls down the banshees but dies a second later they are absolutely useless and Tyranda died in that endeavor as well in comes Uther with a stun against Vala the witch doctor and Vala super low oh and another stun going straight for Uther is really trying to bring the skills out here. A tumble forward by Vala might be able to take down Uther, but no! She's caught off guard. ETC is back to business and Vala just overextending a little bit here and dying in the end. What a crazy engagement that we saw here. A massive team battle between red and blue and in the end red able to catch up a little bit in experience but it's still the slight lead for the blue team that we see there red is trying to push at the bottom with their own golem which is a little bit interesting then since they only have an 11 skull golem the 90 skull golem is all the way at the top pushing with a few heroes of the blue team and this bad boy is really a heavy hitter he wants to go in and he actually well there is a bit of a siege golem push going on against them on the same lane 
supported by Tinka, and Tinka is really trying to make work what he can, using his W a couple of times here against the opponent's team. But the first two towers are already gone all the way to the bottom. Another nice request to chest, getting Uther in here, but oh, the Starfall, really well used by Tyranda, slowing down the opponent's team. Another hero already about to be gone. Well, no, there's the shield for Tassada, but we have so many heroes for the red team just pushing in, while all the way at the top, the Tinka is still the only one trying to defend here with his turrets and with his stuns once more Reyna's ultimate Reyna's Raiders comes in here the badge is immediately being targeted by the blue team nice move by them but Vala has to be careful she's just so squishy and Tassada doesn't look too healthy either once again we have Reyna moving in trying to go for the penetrate round here should maybe have used the Hyperion many people right now think that the Hyperion is the superior heroic ability for him he chose Reyna's Raiders trying to go for that diversity but let's see if this is really what wins him the game in the end. At this point in time, Stitches is moving in at the bottom. He really wants to make sure that he's able to push this back, and it looks good. But at the same time, if you just look at the top of the map, there's still that golem going strong, not really able to crush through that gate just yet, gets finally taken out, and still blue in a slightly dark. Harrigan has to be careful on the other hand. Uther moving in, and uh, in comes the Witch Doctor as the support here. We also have Reyna, once again, one of the best heroes in the game. And uh, uh, many think so because he just has so much a great ultimate. But he got nerfed in a recent patch a little bit. Stitches with an attempt to talk the Witch Doctor with the ultimate, forcing the opponents back. Vala dropping in with her ultimate too, killing one of the heroes. Oh, the Witch Doctor not able to drop Uther. And in comes, of course, Reyna with ETC and the Tinker trying to save the day, giving him a little bit of space to breathe and move back. Vala always looking for a kill in the DPS and she finds it. She tries to go for ETC. Stitches with another hook, missing it this time. In comes Kerrigan with a quick blink, not going for the Primal Grasp just yet, and no Impaling Blades, but a nice shield by Tassada, giving her a little bit more survivability. By the middle of the map, the Knights were taken and start to push the bottom lane. All the heroes fighting all the way at the top, though. Once again, Vala vaults back, really low in HP, and in comes Reyna. Reyna takes her down, the ultimate once again called, and here come the Raiders, going straight for the next hero. Stitches all the way at the front, maybe a little bit exposed, but he gets back up. He has a lot of backup there, and here comes the star for by Tyranna, the red team, trying to go for the chase, trying to take down Stitches, trying to take down Kerrigan, Kerrigan jumps in, she goes down, Tessida on the move, trying to move back as fast as he can, but here comes once again ETC, not enough mana for a power slide apparently, the stun arrow of Tyranda does not really hit, doesn't connect, but at the bottom we have those knights still going ham on that fort, another one going down and that grants the blue team level 15 for now. Blue really wants to push in right now. They want to press the advantage that they have. We have all the way at the top once again a good old Tassada with a time warp trying to push a little bit. The Tinker doing what he does best. He goes jungling and take down, takes down those mercenary cap. Another set of siege golems soon to fight for the red team. But in the middle we have another squad now being attacked by the blue team. All of them joining up here making sure that they have a little bit of pushing power going on while their skulls, their skeletons in the mines once again. And spawn so it's time for those teams to once more go down and collect the skulls one of the best heroes to do that is Vala in this situation and she goes down immediately the demon hunter collecting the skulls for the blue team whereas the rest of the team is trying to connect a, with another set of siege golems but this time caught off guard nice moves here by red ETC with power slide and a face melt going straight for the witch doctor and I have no idea how he's gonna survive he actually goes down and the same might be true for Sitch but oh my god he used the ultimate he uses his ultimate the gorge ability and tries to bring Uther behind the gate so that he gets scaled by the towers. Not able to make that happen though. Dies before that. That was a nice save by the red team. Really singing out for the ally here. And of course now it's time to push for them. They have the siege golems. They have two of them. They are going in already. And red might be able to turn things around. Experience is already nearly on the same level. And once that four drops that we see there to the bottom left, I think that they will actually take a slight lead. And that's exactly what happens. They're on 16 and a half. They're really going ham on blue. Blue needs a couple of defenders. Already the palace being under attack. Nice primal grasp by Kerrigan. We have the rest also resurrected. Vala is moving in. Oh, that's the star for by Tyranda. The Vala ultimate hitting Uther, hitting him hard, but he survives for now. Stitches going for the slam, going for the gorge, trying to somehow get into a good position for yet another hook. And whoa, the wall of zombies just barely missing 
missing old Reyna, who calls his ultimate in again. Vala already low in HP. She's the main DPS for the team. They need her going for the multi-shot. Witch Doctor has to retreat. So does Stitches. He's low in HP. Tassada is doing what he can. He's getting those shields up, but it looks pretty horrible for the blue team right now. Kerrigan goes down. Kerrigan goes down as well. And Red is still alive and kicking. But most of those heroes are low in HP. And Vala, she smells blood in the water. Is trying to go in, but a little bit too far. Dives too deep. Gets stunned by Tyranda and gets killed in the end. At the same time, Tassada is trying to maybe get a last hit in, but denied for now and nearly died there as well. Stitch is moving in, helping him out quite a little bit. There comes another, another great hook. Oh, Tyranda missing her arrow because Stitches was a little bit too fast with the Gorge, trying to go straight for Reyna, but Reyna, he skilled those passive abilities, those talents that really gave him in crucial moments the hit point regeneration. He survives for now and moves back. All the way back at home at the Red Palace, we have Tyranda trying to defend for now while the blue team is gathering their strength once more. They were in the lead. They were the team that was pushing the entire time that had the upper hand, but now it is the red team that is really starting to make some headway. Keep in mind, 50 skulls already have been harvested by the blue team, so their next golem is definitely going to be a big one if they send more heroes down and uh, try to get even more of those. Nice hook by Stitches once again. The attempt to use the zombie wall. Nice setup by the Witch Doctor, but a good dodge by Reyna. And now quite a couple of heroes for the blue team already down in the mines. Collecting those additional skulls. While Uther is going for the knights in the middle of the map. Another knight mercenary camp pushing for them. That would be a great opportunity. Oh my god, Tyranda. What is she doing there? She's dead. No chance to escape. In comes Reyna. In comes the Starfall. In comes Reyna's ultimate. The Tinker still trying to make that work as well. Oh my god, look at that. ETC with a stage dive. That stun. And oh, the Witch Doctor without a chance at all. In the mines, we have Kerrigan with the ultimate, with the Ultralis, trying to take down that golem to finally get the last 20 skulls. And if they get those, they have a 100% golem to push with. But they need to be careful, because Red is moving in as we speak. The palace is under attack. They need to TP back, and they need to TP back right now, or the game is lost. So many heroes for the Red Team, and the only one to stand between them and victory is Stitches. Stitches going for it. Are they going to try and just right-click down the palace? Yes, they are. They're trying to finish the game. This is so close. The Tinker is already down, but the rest of them, I think they were able to make it. The palace is down. GG. And even with 100% Golem, the blue team not able to push just a little bit too late. And bam, Red takes it. What a thriller. What a game. Absolutely amazing performance here by both of them. A nice comeback by Red. Never too far away from the blue team, but that was a pretty sweet match that Blizzard gave us here. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you really enjoyed this match. I certainly did. Make sure that you like the YouTube button, the YouTube video if you enjoyed the commentary and subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you soon. Have a good day.